DeepCool is a company that was built with the vision of giving the best computer DIY solution for the worldwide market by continually looking for innovative breakthroughs. And because of this, the Gamax name has been born. The Gamax branding has been used by DeepCool to label their products that deems to provide the best balance of price to performance and feature, such as the Gamax 400 and the Gamax GT, which are very popular air coolers with high regards from the PC community for being a good performing air cooler that doesn't break the bank. Especially the newer Gamax GT, uh, that one has neat RGB lighting. Meet the Gamax L240. Deepcool's new AIO CPU liquid cooler that aims to delight enthusiasts on the mid-end segment that's looking for a high-performing CPU cooler that not only looks great but is also cost-effective. Let's take a look at the box first. On the front we can see the picture of the Gamax L240 liquid CPU cooler. On the top end it's saying that it's compatible to Asus Aura Sync. Gigabyte RGB Fusion, MSI's Mystic Light Sync, and ASRock's Polychrome Sync. On this side, it's saying that the L240 has RGB fans. The pump also has RGB implementation. It has RGB sync on supported motherboards, compatible to most Intel and AMD sockets, and it's easy to install. At the back, we can see the complete list of the L240's specification, which you can also view on their website. <laughs> Unboxing. Now for the unboxing. First we have the Intel and AMD mounting kit. Inside it we have the Intel pump bracket, fan screws, Deep Coast Universal mounting backlight, Next we have the AMD pump bracket, other mounting accessories like thumb screws and plastic braces, and a thermal paste. Next we have a 4 slotted deep cool PWM fan hub. A deep cool 4-way RGB splitter or extension cable. We have two RGB fans for a radiator which can run from 500 up to 1800 RPM. The fan has two non-braided wires, one to power the fan and another for the RGB lighting. We also have a deep cool RGB adapter or sync cable. On a side note, you cannot connect the splitter or the RGB connector of the fan directly to your motherboard without the included adapter. Deep cool has also included an easy to read instruction manual. And finally, we have the L240 AIO liquid cooler. Let's have a quick look. The radiator is 274 by 120 by 27 millimeter in dimension. The AIO tubings are sleeved. The Gamax logo can be seen on top of the CPU block. Underneath this protective sticker is a thick pure copper. The pump has two non-braided wires, one to power the pump and another to power the Gamax RGB logo. I'll be installing the L240 on my AM4 motherboard. I have an Aorus B450 Pro Wi-Fi and it will be cooling my Ryzen 5 2600X running at stock speed. First we need to screw in the AMD mounting bracket to the pump. Then we need to mount the fans onto the radiator. We'll be doing a pull configuration on the airflow. <laughs> no! 
Once we're done installing the fans, we will also be mounting the radiator on the front side of my Pantex P400 case. Next, we need to install the four standoffs onto the motherboard. And since we have an AM4 motherboard, we just need to screw in the standoffs on the pre-installed backplate. Next, we need to apply thermal paste on the CPU. Remove the protective tape on the CPU block, then mount it on top of the socket. Do a light inward push on the CPU block to ensure the spread of thermal paste, then secure it with the provided thumb screws. Screw in the thumb screws in a diagonal manner and do not over tighten. And for the wiring, connect both fans on the included hub, then connect the hub to the motherboard CPU fan header. Connect the 3-pin CPU pump cable to the CPU off fan header. Connect the RGB cable of your fans and pump to the RGB splitter, then connect the RGB splitter to the included RGB sync adapter, then the adapter to your motherboard. We'll be checking the cooling potential of the Gamex L240 and uh, I'll be comparing it to our Raid Spire cooler. Is the Gamex L240 worth the upgrade? We'll find out. On idle, we got a minimum 44 degrees Celsius on stock and 38 degrees Celsius on the L240. On the average reading, we got 45 degrees Celsius on stock and just 40 degrees on the L240. In terms of idle temperature, we have approximately 11% better cooling performance with the Gamax L240. The temperature while using the stock cooler is quite adequate when it comes to games. Uh, we used Apex Legends with Chrome running on the background to simulate a typical gaming session. On a side note, uh, due to my GPU's limitation, I've set the game's video settings to low. Uh, the temp can go down to 57 degrees Celsius when the game is just on the loading screen or on character selection. Temperature hovers around 66 degrees most of the time during gameplay. CPU utilization was ranging from uh, 14 uh, to 41 percent and most of the time it was just sitting around 35 percent so the max CPU speed recorded during play was 4.025 gigahertz. With the L240 we got a minimum temperature reading of 45 degrees Celsius which is 12 degrees cooler than the Raid Spire. On average we got 49 degrees Celsius uh, which is an astonishing win versus the 66 degrees uh, Celsius reading on the stock cooler. For the max temp uh, we got a reading of 59 degrees Celsius uh, versus the 73 degrees Celsius of the stock cooler. Overall, we got approximately 25% better performance in terms of cooling and because of this, um, our max CPU speed now runs up to 4.150 GHz. Next, we use IDA64 to gauge the cooler's cooling potential when uh, all of the six CPU cores are being utilized or maxed out. The average temperature hovers in a scary 98 degrees that sometimes goes over 100 degrees Celsius. The max temperature read on our 10 minute run was 106. CPU utilization was on 100% and our CPU speed was capped at 3.82 GHz. On the L240, we got an average of 79 degrees Celsius on full load which is quite amazing compared to the results on the stock cooler. At max temp we got 89 degrees Celsius which is still good considering the load that our CPU is getting from the stress test. And because we got a bump in cooling performance, XFR kicked in and gave us 1 GHz more in performance. Our max CPU speed reading was 3.92 GHz. 
Now for the acoustics test. I'll be using my phone to capture the acoustics of the Rage Spire and the L240. We'll just be getting the sound difference of the two when they're set on idle and on full load. On idle, we'll just let the PC sit on the desktop. The Alto 40 is marginally quieter than our stock cooler. On load, again we'll be using ID64 stability test to reveal the max noise levels of the two coolers. They both sound very loud on load, uh, with the L240 being the loudest. Well, to be honest, given that it has two fans and the cooling potential it provides, the result is quite acceptable. And on a side note, since we have better cooling potential on the L240, most of the time, the PC that has the L240 installed runs quieter because the fan configuration isn't going to be as aggressive like the one with the, uh, the stock cooler. For the final thought, uh, getting an aftermarket cooler for Ryzen is like putting a cherry on top of your cake. It makes it look fancier and it even adds sweetness to the mix. You can either live with it or without it. It's a different story though for Intel users. It's actually a sin for enthusiasts not to replace their Intel stock cooler. Back in the days when beefy air coolers was still a thing and RGB was non-existent or was still in development, I had an Intel i5-3570K cooled by a Fantex PH-TC14PE, you know, uh, the air cooler that covers top half of your ATX board. The upgrade from an Intel stock cooler to that was very remarkable in terms of acoustics, cooling, and aesthetics. So, is it worth it for enthusiasts on the mid-end segment to upgrade their Rage Spire or Stealth coolers to the Gamex L240? The answer is yes. If you're done upgrading all of your main components and you have a few bucks to spare, Getting an aftermarket AIO or beefy air cooler in the long run is complementary for your build. The Gamex L240 performs competitively well. It looks great with minimalistic RGB design on the CPU block, has RGB fans, has braided tubing, and it has a very good price point. You can get the Gamex L240 for only 3,360 pesos on PC Hub or 3,350 at DynaQuest. The Gamax L240 truly deserves to be a cherry on top of your PC build. This is Gino from GTV. Ciao!